Good evening, folks, for our Thursday evening look in God's Word together for our devotions this week, of course, being our focus, our theme uh, as the gospel-born family that we are. So good evening, Glenothus Baptist Church uh, and those others who are tuning in and listening along with us. Uh, we've got a lot of shout outs. Uh, oh, Anne Lang saying she had dripping water through her kitchen ceiling today. <gasps> Bathroom floor wet, plumber came, needed a washer uh, at Cistern and let take a week or two to dry out. Happy day. Oh dear, Anne, what a shame. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help or support or drop off if you need uh, while that's going on. What a shame. Um, yeah, I'm not going to take too long. We we uh, we started just there that little bit tighter tonight. Um, I just wanted to update and just say, uh, keep in prayer the fellowship at Inverkeithen. Uh, those brothers and sisters there uh, at Inverkeithen Baptist. I had a lovely time on the phone today with Helen uh, Guyan, the uh, the deacon who takes care of administration, and um, the secretary there at the church. We had a lovely time catching up and uh, just seeing how things were going there for them and uh, how we can be praying for them. So let's be praying for them. Obviously, as a church grieving uh, the passing of their under shepherd, uh, our friend Ross Brown. Um, obviously, they have that whole process of, of grieving, not just in him retiring, but him passing away and going on to be with the Lord. We rejoice that he is uh, rejoicing with the Lord right now. But for them in this present moment, the sadness and sorrow of, of missing him and losing him. So pray for them in this time of transition. Uh, they're in vacancy, of course, but they set up this revitalization team and we've been working together with them and, and walking through uh, that process together. In a couple of weeks, Lord willing, we plan to either get together on Zoom or whatever way is possible. And we'll be looking together uh, at these nine marks of what a biblical church good ecclesiology looks like uh, we've been doing that study together and so we'll be looking together at, at these aspects of what the church is and so pray for us in that as we meet uh, pray for the couple of different candidates that they're considering or uh, potentially looking at at the moment uh, it's exciting that God has not abandoned them or forsaken them or left them just as he promised in his word but there are uh, men of God that he is preparing and bringing along for them to consider. Well, let me uh, bring a, a, a word from, from uh, Scripture as we focus our minds in prayer, and then we're going to hand over to our dear brother, uh, Brian Oxenham, tonight as he leads us as the family of God who love one another because God first loved us. So let me read from Romans 9, if you would, Romans 8, sorry, uh, from verse 31. So we're looking at Romans 8, 31 uh, through to 39. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor heights nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray as we think about God's love for us. God, I thank you that you are an, an unchanging God. You're a God who 
uh, described himself in these terms, that you were a, a God rich in love, abounding in steadfast love, slow to mercy, slow to anger and rich in mercy. Lord, I thank you that that is who you are, uh, that is who you were and that is who you are today. Lord, I thank you that that is what you have shown to us in the Lord Jesus, in redeeming us, uh, purchasing us from our sin, uh, and Lord, adopting us into your family. Lord, I thank you that you love us. You love the fellowship in Inverkeithen Baptist. Uh, Lord, you love your people all around the world. And so, Lord, I thank you that tonight, as Brian comes to share with us from your word, uh, we can be reminded of what your love looks like in action through us as we love one another. So Lord, bless the church in Inverkeithen, bless Helen, bless the revitalization team, and bless them as a fellowship, Lord, I pray, in these days of transition. Uh, And Lord, I pray that you would provide for them everything they need, uh, Lord, abundantly in the riches that we have in Christ Jesus. So Lord, we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, let's hand over to our dear brother Brian as he leads us in 1 John 4 tonight. Hi everyone. It's lovely to be with you this evening to share something of God's Word. I hope that despite all that's going on just now, that you're experiencing God's blessing in your lives. Our scripture reading tonight is in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Dear friends, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, Since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Let's pray before we begin. Lord, we come into your most holy presence again tonight. We thank you for your word, your word that's a source of strength, a source of comfort and a guide to us throughout all our lives. And so, Lord, we would ask a blessing on our time together and pray that you might teach us your way, O Lord. Teach us your way. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, what wonderful verses and a wonderful subject to explore with you this evening. God's love. Doesn't passages like these just cheer our hearts hearts in times like these? We are loved of God. Praise him. Surely it's one of the greatest, if not the the greatest, theme of the Bible. God loves us, simple yet profound. Is that not a truth, a fact, that's worth holding on to, worth remembering, worth treasuring? No matter our changing circumstances, our trials or our problems, God's love for us is constant. Without it we wouldn't have salvation, or we wouldn't have heaven as our eternal destination, our living hope. That is, if you're watching tonight and you've accepted Christ as Saviour. It's a love that led God to send Jesus to the cross. It's ceaseless, everlasting, causeless. It's agape love. We should be admirers of his love, lovers of his love, and love those that he loves. The hymn writer said, What kind of love is this that gave itself for me? I am the guilty one, Yet I go free. What kind of love is this? A love I've never known. I didn't even know his name. What kind of love is this? What kind of man is this that died in agony? He who had done no wrong was crucified for me. What kind of man is this who laid aside his throne that I may know the love of God? What kind of man is this? Some years ago, a few friends and I were returning back home from a day trip in the car. It was in the days when the fourth road bridge was still a toll road. As we queued up at the toll booths, someone in the car suggested for a laugh we should also pay the toll for the car behind us in the queue as well. When the car behind us pulled up to the booth, the driver was told 
the queue, the toll had been paid by the car in front, and they didn't need to pay. The barrier went up and they were allowed to cross the bridge at no cost to them. The folks in the car didn't know who had paid their toll or why, but we know who paid the price for our sins that we should have paid with our eternal punishment, the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Why did he do that? Because God loves us. Graham Kendrick, the hymn writer, penned these words, The price is paid, to come let us enter in, to all that Jesus died to make our own. For every sin, more than enough he gave, and bought our freedom from each guilty stain. The price is paid, hallelujah, amazing grace, so strong and sure, and so with all my heart, my life in every part, I live to thank you for the price you paid. I live to thank you for the price you paid. How do we do this? The passage we've read tonight says we ought to love one another. This love that God has shown towards us should provoke a response in us to show others the kind of love we have received. Ephesians 5 says, Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. Jesus sacrificed his life for us, and we should be prepared to sacrifice our lives in love to others. We have received the Holy Spirit, a deposit of our eternal inheritance, part of the triune God indwells us. Love is one of the fruits of the Spirit. If we allow him, if we surrender to the Spirit, he will help us show love, God's sacrificial love to our fellow brothers and sisters. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul emphasises the importance of love. He starts the chapter by saying, I will show you the most excellent way. Some commentators say that this chapter is the greatest, strongest, deepest thing Paul ever wrote. He showed how to love those that were given to him. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul emphasises the importance of love. He starts the chapter by saying, I will show you the most excellent way. Some commentators say that this chapter is the greatest, strongest, deepest thing Paul ever wrote. He showed to those that were given them how pointless spiritual gifts were without love and the importance of love and ends the chapter by saying, These three remain, faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. We as God's people are a group of individuals with different backgrounds, different interests, different characteristics and different temperaments. In a natural sense, we wouldn't ordinarily be inclined to show love to others that are unlike ourselves, but we have a common denominator. We're all loved of God as his children and have accepted his love. This love in his Holy Spirit changes our natural instincts to give us a spiritual instinct to love his people. In a world that seems so full of selfishness and sadness, we can shine showing God's love to others. Galatians 6 verse 10 says, Let us do good to all people but especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Notice the words, the verse says, do good. Love is not just a warm feeling, it's actions, it's sacrificial actions. The definition of love reinforces this. Love is the self-sacrifice for the good of another that doesn't demand reciprocation or that the person being loved deserves it. It isn't exclusively kind deeds. It can come in many forms, including prayer and spiritual guidance. Love is a choice. It's a choice that costs. You can't love others when you're looking in the mirror or give to others while you're still clinging to what you've got. We need to sacrifice our time, energy, money and resources and our preoccupation with ourselves. In God's upside-down kingdom, we assume others more important than ourselves. Christ's love is the standard we should aspire to. His love should so fill us It should overflow and manifest itself in our showing his love to our brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 Peter says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. God wants us to be more like Christ. The more we surrender our life and will to the Holy Spirit, the more love we will show. If we do surrender to the Holy Spirit, then our love for one another will be uplifting for those fellow Christians that benefit from it and will see evidence of God's love through us. It will motivate us to persevere to love our brothers and sisters in Christ despite our own trials in life. 
it will demonstrate to the world Christ's mission and us as God's agents as he is acting through us and will be a testimony to the love of the unseen God. It will be honouring and pleasing to God and will rise as a sweet fragrance to him. Again, Ephesians 5 says, Live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Look at what he's done for us. He loves us. He sent Jesus to die for us. He's forgiven our sins. He's given us the Holy Spirit. and One day, he'll take us to heaven. We sing, Such love, pure as the whitest snow. Such love, weeps for the shame I know. Such love, fountain of life to me, O Jesus, such love. John 15 verse 12 says, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Let's continue to walk in love day by day and encourage each other as the gospel-born family of God to love one another and do good works, serving patiently and sacrificially, just as Jesus did. Let's pray. Lord, forever we want to praise, worship and adore you for the love that nailed Jesus to the cross of Calvary. May we, day by day, surrender our will and our lives more and more to your Holy Spirit, so that we can show this love to others, but especially to those of the family of God. And so tonight we pray especially for those in the family of GBC that need your love more, especially in these days that we're going through. Those that feel, are feeling ill, those that are feeling sad, those that are feeling lonely, those that are bereaved, Lord, we pray that you might help us give the, have the wisdom, the strength and the courage to show your will more and more in these days. And so, Lord, bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless.